Saches Nudarm Daf Samach Gimel contains two Mishnayos, three sugyos, and takes us to the end of the eighth parak of the Masechta. The first sugya before the first Mishnah deals with the Machogis, which we had seen in our last Mishnah as to what happens when someone says until the rains come, does he mean until the rain itself or until the time of the rain? Get to the next Mishnah, which talks about a leap year. What does the extra month count as, as far as Hilchas Nudarm? And then we get to the Second Mishnah, which gives us exceptions to the rule that Achi He means until an event ends. So let's begin. Seen in the last Mishnah, what happens if somebody says until the rain? So we had said everyone agrees that that means until the second rain of the season. The question is, does it mean until the rain actually falls? Or does it mean until the time when the rain is due to fall? According to Rashim and Ben Gamliel, it meant the time. According to the Chachamim, it means the actual rain. Now, Rabbi Zera begins. Rabbi Zera says that the only Machokas is in a case where they said ad zman gshamim, plural, until the rains fall. If they just said until the rain falls, it most certainly means until the time of the rain, because that is the most normal thing that you can mean, the time of the rain. You don't usually make a nether and say until the actual rain falls, because no one knows when that's going to actually happen. So if he said Adak Geshem, everybody agrees that it means until the rain comes down. If he says Adak Shomim, Ad Zman Shomim, then, or he said Adak Shomim, until the rains, that's extra language. What is the point of the extra language? According to the Chachamim, he meant to say that I'm saying specifically only when it actually rains. That's why we added an extra phrase, extra letters. According to Rashim and Ben Gamil, no, he just meant to say until the time of the rain. He didn't mean to make it more strict than that. So now the Gemara says we're going to bring you a Raya, that this is not correct, of Zeres Prat is not correct, and the Machokas has to be even in a case where he said Ad Hageshem. Now, the Raya is complex. The answer is very simple. So the Raya begins with a Bryce discussing what are the three periods of rainfall. There are three times when rain needs to fall during the winter. The mission, the Bryce that we're quoting calls it the Bechira, the Benonis, and the Afila, which is the third rain. So according to Rabbi Meir, the three periods are the third day of Cheshvan, the seventh day of Cheshvan, and the 23rd day of Cheshvan. Rabbi Yehuda starts with Rabbi Meir's the second day. He says it's the 7th, the 17th, and the 23rd. And Rabbi Yaisi says it's the 17th, the 23rd, and the third day of Kislev. Now, the Gemara discussed elsewhere. Why do we need to know when the days the rains are supposed to fall are on? Who cares? So that you're supposed to know when it's supposed to start, that I understand, because you have to know when to start being mispal, when to start mentioning rain in tefillah, when to start saying Masha Ruch You also have to know when it's supposed to be the third rainfall, because if it hasn't fallen by then, it's time to start fasting. The Gemara even quotes Rabbi Yaisi, who said that no one should start fasting until Rosh Chodesh Kislev, because he holds that the third rain is not until the third of Kislev. Now, why do we need the middle one for? So the Gemara says you need the middle one for if somebody makes a nether. If somebody says, I'm making a nether until the third, uh, until the second rainfall. So you have to know when is the second rainfall supposed to fall. Now, therefore, we have to have the middle one. Now the Gemara brings a brisa which says that there's a statement of Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, who's the Tana in our Mishnah, who said that it's until the time. So Rav Shimon ben Gamliel said that if it rains from, if it rains for seven days long, that counts as both the first rain period and the second rain period. It's not going to be that it has to stop and then start. If it rains for seven days straight, you got the first. Now, we had said there that who, which time of this is fit with, it has to be Rabbi Yaisi, because he's the only one who has seven days between the first rain and the second rain. He says that the first one is on the 17th and the second one is on the 23rd. All the other ones, according to Rabbi Meir, it's the third and the seventh, there's only four days between them. According to Rabbi it's the seventh and 17th, so there are 10 days between them. So it's got to be Rabbi Yaisi. All right, now, for our intents and purposes here, though, you see that the Pashas is, we're talking in all cases, even if they said Al HaGeshem, the only halacha that this is relevant for is Hilchas Nidarim. So when Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel is saying that if it rains for seven days straight, it counts for the first day, and it counts as the second rain, it has to mean in Hilchas Nidarim. Now, the only thing that it's relevant for is if someone makes a neder until the second rain period, so we have to know when that rain period is reached. 
Now, why is the Shem Gamliel telling me that if it's still raining straight from the first period to the second period, it counts as if the second period is zero? According to Shem and Ben Gamliel, as long as the time arrives, it makes no difference if it's actually raining or not. So what's enough for Gamina if it's raining straight, it's not raining straight. The time arrived, the time arrived. So what you have to say is, is that he's talking about that there is a circumstance in which he holds that it depends on if it's actually raining or not. Now, that would be only for Shem and Gamliel saying pshat in the Chacham. However, if Shem Gamliel is saying pshat in the Chachamim, and he's saying it even in a case where he said al hageshem, according to Rabbi Zera, there's no machlokas in that case. So how could he be saying pshat in the Chachamim? No one holds in that case that it makes a difference if it's raining or not. It just goes up to the time period. So it has to be that even in the case of al hageshem, there is a machlokas, and then if Shem Gamliel is saying pshat in the Chachamim, even according to you who hold that it has to actually reach the rains. So this counts as rains, even though it never stopped raining since the first period all the way to the second period. So therefore, so therefore, Reb Zayir must be wrong. So the Gemara says, no, this Mishnah is only talking about this. Bryce is only referring to where he said al hageshem. It's not talking about where the where he actually said al hageshem. There would be uh, no machlokas in that case. Now we get the next Mishnah, which discusses the halachas of an extra Adar. So the Mishnah says two halachas. First of all, if somebody says he makes a ned there to Asr an entire year, and it ends up being a leap year, there's an extra Adar added. So that is included in the ned there. The ned there applies to the entire year, even if there's an extra Adar added. And even if he didn't know there was going to be an extra Adar at that time, he meant whatever's involved in the year. Now, second halacha is what happens if he says Adar? until Adar, or until the end of Adar, and it turns out that there's more than one Adar. So the Mishnah Paskins, he means the first Adar. The, the, if he said until Adar, then it's up until the first Adar, the beginning of the first Adar, and if he said until the end of Adar, then it's until the end of the first Adar. So Gemara begins, Gemara says, this seems to be the opinion of Rabbi Huda. If a Machlokasin or Meir and Rabbi Huda, Stam Adar, the standard Adar is which one? Does it refer to the first Adar or the second Adar? Rabbi, Rabbi Meir says it refers to the first Adar. If somebody wants to write a Shtar, so if he writes, if he wants to refer to the first Adar, he should write Adar Rishon. If he wants to refer to the second Adar, he just has to write Adar. Standard Adar refers to the second Adar. That is not like our Mishnah, which has the standard Adar refers to the first Adar. That's what Behuda or Yudah says you want to write a Shtar. So you're referring to the first Adar, you just write standard Adar. You're referring to the second Adar, you have to write Adar Shani. So Gemara says, no, it could be that this really fits with Rabbi Meir. And the reason here that it says Adar Rishon is because the Mishnah is talking about we are the person at the time that he made the nether was not aware there was going to be two others. So therefore he meant the month that comes after Shvat, which in this case happens to be Adarish and didn't even know there was going to be a second Adar. However, in a case where a person knew there was going to be a second Adar, the standard Adar refers to the second Adar and not the first one. Gemara says, I'll prove that to you from a Brisa. Brisa says two alachas. If somebody says he makes a nether until Rosh Chodesh Adar, then it's until Rosh Chodesh Adar Rishon. If it turns out that it's that it's an Ibriyar and there's two Adars, then it refers, then it refers to Adar Shani. So Gemara says, I don't understand the first case. The first case, he... he there weren't going to be two others. The first case is only one other. So what are you telling me other reason for? Obviously, there's two others. So in both cases, talking about the two others, what's the difference between the two cases? It must be that the first case is talking about where he didn't know there was going to be a second other, and the second case is talking about where he knew all along that it was going to be a second other. And therefore, the first case, the standard other is other reason, and the second case, the standard other is other shady, just like we've explained. From here until the rest, until the end of the daf, which is the end of the Parak is one lengthy Mishnah discussing a number of cases which are ex- exceptions to the rule of Ad Shayeh. Generally, we say if somebody says Ad Shayeh a certain time, it means till that time is over. So if somebody says Ad Shayeh a Pesach, it doesn't mean until Pesach begins, it means until Pesach ends. So the Gemara, the exceptions to that is if there's an obvious time which we can assume he was referring to, which is at the beginning. So for example, if somebody says, I'm not going to drink wine, I'm making a net against wine, Ad Shayeh a Pesach. Obviously, the reason why he said until Pesach because he wants to be able to drink wine for the Kosas at the Seder. So therefore, even though Ache Hay normally means till the end of Pesach, here it means until the beginning of Pesach, which is the time when people drink wine. Th- same thing if somebody says, I'm not going to eat meat until Yom Kippur. Obviously, until the end of uh, uh, Ache Hay. Yom Kippur. He obviously means that he can eat meat and see some of seconds. That is a time when people want to matter themselves to eat meat. Rav uh, um, adds if somebody says, I'm not going to eat garlic up until Achtehe Shabbos. So there's a minute to eat garlic on Friday night. And therefore, obviously, he wanted to make himself mutter to eat garlic Friday night. And that's why he left that time accepted. He can eat Friday night in the beginning of Shabbos, not at the end of Shabbos. 
Now we get to a number of cases where you can cancel a nether without having to get Shailas Chacham. So the first one, if somebody says to his friend, he's trying to get his friend to accept a gift that he wants to give him. So he says, I'm not going to have Hana from you if you don't take from me. Uh, or you could say to give to his son, as we are speaking with respect. You don't take from me a quart of wheat and two barrels of wine. And that guy refuses. You can cancel the nether without having to go to Chacham because you could just say, I consider like it's fulfilled. Because he could say, the only reason you wanted to give it to me is to honor me. My honor is not to take the wine. Now, the inverse of that case, if somebody says to his friend, you're not going to have enough from me if you don't come and give my son a core of wheat and two barrels of wine. So here you have a machlagus. The mayor says, you can't get out of this one. He has to give it or the nether is chal. The chalim say no. He could say that I wanted to get this, but I consider it as if I accepted it, as if I already have it. And therefore, it's considered to be as if the nether was fulfilled. You don't have to have a Torah's chacham. Next case is if somebody is being convinced they're working on someone to marry his niece, that is his sister's daughter. The Gemara says it was a minig, even a mitzvah, to marry one's niece. This guy didn't want to. So he made an iser hana on that woman. Similarly, if somebody was divorcing his wife and he makes an iser hana on his wife, then he didn't marry the sister or he did divorce the wife. And now we come to a situation where there are normal, regular, non-marital hanas that they want to get from each other. They want to sell or something or to borrow something, whatever it is. So the halacha is that the hana is permitted. The only hana that he meant to asser was marital hana. That he was trying to avoid the marriage or trying to get out of the marriage and therefore he's allowed to have any other type of hana because that's not what he meant. Last case in the mission is if somebody is being urged to come eat a suit in his friend's house and he says I make an I'm not setting foot into your house and I'm not drinking even a drop of water then he is allowed to go into his house and he's allowed to drink water. The only thing that he meant to do was to say, I'm not going to have a full suda. He was just exaggerating so that it will be emphatic. But he didn't mean to actually ask that and therefore he's allowed to have those hanas.